Hello. Hello. My name is uh, Per Darvonnes Langdal, and uh, I work as a software consultant in BEC. Uh, but, but today I'm going to talk about something that's a bit different, and uh, that's how to program without using your hands. Um, so uh, the agenda is this. Uh, the demo is uh, probably going to be the best part, but I need a bit of intro and some reflections towards the end. Um, so yeah, just a small bit of intro why I even uh, know how to do this. Um, I've been struggling with the tennis elbow or tendonitis or whatever you want to call it for uh, the last five years, uh, on and off, so not always, but sometimes. And it's been extra bad this uh, last year. And because of that, I started to look into voice coding as a way to alleviate uh, the elbow to help it recover and also as a sort of a backup plan. So I don't use this for work today because uh, my injury has not gotten that serious that I need to, uh, which means that I'm not a super user, but I think I have become proficient enough to where uh, I think my demonstration will be realistic and hopefully interesting and uh, maybe a bit fun. Um, the program I use for this is called uh, Talent Voice. Um, and it does voice control, it does eye tracking, it's very scriptable, which means you can create all your own commands just as you want. It works on all the big operating systems, and it's free of charge. Uh, um, but before we begin, uh, I need just a bit of practical info. Uh, just one sec, I need to resize this presenter view so I can see the slide. Yeah. Um, so I use a phonetic alphabet to write or press letters. Uh, so if I want to press ABC, I'm going to say air, bat, cap. Um, also, uh, I use the Vim plugin for Visual Studio Code. Um, and that's because I've used Vim, which is a program for a very long time. So uh, it's hard for me to not use Vim. Uh, what that means for people who, who are not that familiar with Vim is that you have uh, what's called a command mode which is a special mode uh, where you can navigate text and manipulate text. Uh, so if I want to, for instance, delete a word, then I'll typically uh, press DW. Uh, but because I'm using this phonetic alphabet, it's I'm going to say drum whale. Uh, so that's going to be uh, maybe a bit confusing for you. Um, also, you say here, if uh, I want to press I, I have to say eyes. And that's if I want to go to insert mode and Ode is what I'll say to insert a new line and start writing text. But uh, don't worry, if I start saying random words, it's because of this. Um, and then I'm going to resize this. OK. Uh, so for the demo, I'm going to make a small React component, uh, which will show some random useless facts that we fetch from an API. And um, it doesn't matter if you know React, because uh, that's not the important part. Uh, so I think we'll just uh, jump right into it. So I'm just going to do this and open a new like this. So first, I'm just going to do like a small warm up so that you can understand um, how I write variables, for instance. So it will be easier to follow after. So first, I'm just going to write ABC. Air, bat, cap. Enter. Shift air, shift bat, shift cap. Escape. Ode. Enter. So now I'm going to write a long comment, which you sometimes have to do in your code. Hash. Space. Say this is a very, very, very long comment. Yeah, I see I fucked up the one of the various, but that's OK. I'm not going to go back to fix it. And so the last thing I'll do is to just show you how you can format code, like format a variable. So some people, or in some languages, you use camel case. In some languages, you use snake case. And sometimes you use uh, hammer case, or what I would call Pascal case. But uh, Tell and Voice calls it hammer case. So you can make or format text like this. Camel, my variable name. Enter. Snake, my variable name. Enter. Hammer, my variable name. Yeah. 
Um, oops. Um, yeah, uh, it's uh, surprisingly imprecise today. I'm just gonna claim that that's because of the microphone. Um, also, I need to fix because right now um, <laughs> I, ha I need to uh, clone my display to not go crazy because I can't code looking there. So I'm sorry, <laughs> this always happens with this demo. It's very demo ghosty. Um, so just give me a small second to fix it. Uh, mirror. It's also be gonna become better for you because then you can see, you can understand a bit more what's happening. Okay, so now we did uh, a warm up and um, my app is running right now. Oh, okay, I'll uh, make the text bigger. Uh, yeah, maybe like this. Can everyone see? In the back? Yeah, okay. Uh, so now we have this app running, um, but unfortunately it doesn't do anything yet. So we're going to start writing some code now. One go to. Ice. Word const. Trap. Space. Hammer API URL. Space equals space. Dub quote. Uh, uh, focus Firefox. Tab next. Address bar. Copy it. Focus code. Paste it. Delete. Focus Firefox. Okay, so uh, now uh, to get the rest of the API URL, I'm gonna have to select this text that I'm I'm gonna just make this a bit bigger. Uh, I need to select this text, and I'm gonna try to do that with the eye tracker. And this is always uh, very uh, exciting when I'm doing a demo like this, because it's failed in 10 different ways. Uh, in I had this talk uh, two or three times before. Um, uh, the reason it often doesn't work is because, uh, one thing, spotlights in my eyes uh, confuse the sensor. Also, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, also, the, the eye tracker is not positioned as it should be uh, ideally. It should be like here, and I should be sitting in, like in a steady chair, so my head doesn't move. Um, but here I'm sitting on like a wobbly thing, and this is wobbling. So we'll just see. So first I'll just show you some general use of the eye tracker, and then I'll try to drag select uh, this text here with my eyes. So that's going to be very exciting. Okay. Control mouse. Touch, touch, and then I can look a bit down here. So you see it's both tracking my head movement and also tracking my gaze. Um, okay, so now I'm going to try this drag select, which is very exciting. I hope it works. Drag, touch, copy it. Whew. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't use this um, eye tracker when I'm coding normally because it's kind of con um, like uh, it gets in the way. It's kind of distracting when it's just moving around like you see right now. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it off. Control mouse. Paste it. And enter. Go down. And enter. Word const, space, square, camel random fact, comma, space, camel set random fact, go right, space equals space, camel use state, enter, paren, word undefined, go right, enter, Second, camel use effect, enter, paren, empty lambda, comma, space, square, go left fourth, enter, word fetch, go down, enter, paren, file save, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna, uh, s you see down here um, in the fetch and set fact, uh, function, I have some commented out code, and that's just because it's mostly boilerplate, so to speed up the demo, and also so you don't have to listen to me speak a boilerplate. So now I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm guessing I'm already short on time, so I'm just gonna zoom through the rest of the implementation, s and then we can get to the last part. Escape. 19 go to, drum drum, 22 go to, drum drum, 14 go to, go right third, drum whale, drum whale, ice, brace, word random, enter, right brace, and enter. Do the rest. Um, <laughs> focus Firefox. Uh, yeah, so I just took a shortcut there so that I could do this talk in 15 minutes. Yeah, the lights are back on. Um, so there you s saw, I, like I, uh, to produce code went relatively smoothly. Um, and now we have this working app that whenever I press this button, fetches a random useless fact. Uh, so this is just a really short demo to show you how it would look like uh, to produce code with um, yeah, your uh, uh, voice and your eyes. Uh, let's see if this works. Yes, it works. Nice. Okay. Um, so uh, what works well with this? I'm going to say a bit about that. My elbow is successfully relieved when I do this. I don't use it, so uh, obviously that works. Um, a plethora of commands are included, uh, some of which I've show, uh, shown you now, but there are so many others for all, all the programs you use, like uh, VS Code, but also like IntelliJ and yeah, a lot of others. It's easy to create your own commands, and eye tracking is very useful when needed and fairly precise. So, uh, yeah, I think I managed to show it uh, today. Um, what well doesn't work that well? Uh, it's not ideal for working in an open office, <laughs> as you can imagine. Uh, I know some people do do it, like uh, there's are, there are actually microphones that's like a mask so that you can speak into it and others don't hear it, uh, but still it's not ideal. O it's also slower than coding uh, with your hands, which can be quite frustrating when you learn this. Um, and I get tired after long coding sessions, like both in my voice, but that can be fixed with a good microphone so you don't have to speak so loudly, but also like in my head because I have to think about the commands uh, and it's not as automatic as writing with your hands. Also, you can only use eye tracking on a single display. Uh, it's not really been a big problem, but I included it anyway. So uh, to summarize, it's not a perfect solution, but it's a lot better than not being able to program at all. So that's, the, that's my talk. Um, if you want to, you can come ask me questions later if you see me somewhere around the venue. Uh, and thank you for listening.